So a static method you can call by giving it the class name and the method name, rather than the object name and the, and the class and the method name. Say that one more time. Did so like a static method belongs, belongs to the class. class. You don't need to instantiate. So you don't need to make an object of that class. You can call it an object. Right. Static is a lousy, lousy name for this adjective. So what does static suggest to you? It doesn't change. Something that shocks you. Yeah, I've understood that. Also, and because um, it, it's left over from C, and in C, static <coughs> means um, in C, static means. I don't think static was ever used for function names in C. It was used for variables. <coughs> And so the Java creator said, well, I, we need a keyword that means this method doesn't belong to the object. It belongs to the class. And the Java creators thought, why don't we just reuse static? Because it's not being used in that particular situation for methods. Rather than defining a new keyword, and because the Java creator said, we want C programmers to feel all warm and cozy when they come to Java. And so that means reusing as many of the keywords as possible. Even the dumb ones that don't make any sense. Even the ones that don't make any sense. So rather than define a new keyword that maybe means uh, like class member or something like that, they just reuse static. So it makes no sense in this particular situation what the, if, you, if you try to infer the meaning from static, you don't get it belongs to the class. You get something like it doesn't change. So um, with static, you never have to go uh, random list r equals new random list. I never have to go list factory f equals new list factory. You never have to do that? No. So let's compile this. Now I can just say list factory <coughs> dot random list. But before I, before I did f dot random list, because I created an object right. from the factory and then called this method, right. now I don't have to, to create an object. I can just say Give me a random list, and then convert it to a string. So it makes the object on its own. Yeah. But in fact, if I try to create a factory, and then call random list on it, well, actually it'll work. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to work. Um, you can use it either way. Okay, but making a method static means I don't have to create the factory object. I can just call this method directly. Make sense? You good? Well, that created a nice long one. Then. All right, so what are you going to do for your project? You're going to make a expression factory. It's going to roll the dice. Expression. And instead of returning singleton and compound, you're going to return plus, plus minus add, add. subtract. Does it also put the numbers too? Mm -hmm. Except like when you when you create a new ad, it needs an expression and an expression. So how do you fill in those two things? Just, just call random list again or random expression. And when you want to put a number in there, just create a random random number. Very similar to this, okay. except that instead of returning single digits and compounds, you're going to return adds, mult, log, constant, bar, things like that. Okay. So you're going to have a lot more cases in here. Yeah. Uh, you could do a technique like this.
this where you kind of steer it towards um, what, what things would, would, would what would things are at the bottom of the, the expression trees? <coughs> Values and variables. variables are at the bottom. So you could tilt the odds in favor of coming up with those things in order to reduce the overall length. We were, here we were tilting it the odds in favor of doing compounds, so we would get long lists. But the problem is, what happens if you end up with questions that are too deep? And in fact, you can get ones that are too deep. Let's let's create let's really tilt the odds in favor of a compound. Larry, uh, times it by a hundred. Thousand? Oh, hell. <laughs> now it's one thousand. That's what I want to do. I want to do this one. That's not very long. No? Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Whatever it was, 5,536. Stack overflow, and it shows you here that random list was calling random list, which was calling random list, which was calling random list, calling random list. So there's a limit to how many times you can recursively call yourself. Now, uh, in a language like Python, it has set something called the the stack depth limit. In Python, you can only call the stack is limited to a thousand items. You can change that number, but by default, it's 1,000. In Java, it's not that there's a limit, a hard limit on the number of, of items in the stack. It's just that there's memory set aside for the stack. I think it's like a megabyte or something like that. And if you fill that up, then the stack overflows. So you can change how much memory it gives for the stack. So we could say, uh, let's put in a gigabyte for the stack, and then we can go really deep. But we're still possibly going to overflow it. Because even if we give it a gigabyte, we still might produce too many things. And actually, the, pro the problem with expressions is it, it sort of compounds <coughs> itself. Because an expression, a lot of them have two children. And then a lot of those have two children. And so the, the stack depth is not the total number of nodes in there. It's, it's what's the total depth of the whole thing. <coughs> So we might want to put in a limit that says, you know, don't produce any more than a certain number. So when we get to a certain number, just produce a singleton and, and we're done. So how can we do that? Uh, maybe a counter? We need a counter? So you, every time... <clears throat> Every time you go through the random list, you can come through. So you would have a global and mm -hmm. counter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then inside the list, so, the, so as soon as you call this random, it's going to increment it by one. You go through it again, it increments it again. But every time you go through it. So every time, so you, can every time you call random list, list some, some number goes up? Yeah. Because you would have a global. OK. A private. Yeah. Private and an int count. Inside of here, we go count plus plus. Yep. And then you have an if statement somewhere that says if if count is equal to let's just make it artificially low so that we know that it's going to bump into that so it's stability. Because count is ten. Return singleton. Remember, return if return this. Thing. So we're going to increment this count. If the count reaches 10, then we're just going to return a singleton and we're done.
this, this variable here doesn't belong to the class, it belongs to an object. If we make it static, it belongs to the class. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay. Let's do it again. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> uh oh. What happened? You got to, oh, you got to reset the counter. Mm -hmm. You said, is equal to 10? Inside the, inside the, should be greater than or equal to 10. it's greater than or equal to 10. greater than or equal to 10. Then you should reset the counter. How do I reset the counter? Right there inside the if statement before you hit the new. If you're, I mean, you're going through the if statement. Yeah. After, after, after your turn. Before. 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 Okay. One, What are the odds that we end up with a list that's less than 10? It's like 1 in 100 or something like that. I thought you were 1 over 1,000. That, that's, any particular node is going to be a singleton. But the odds that a singleton appears within a list of 10 is like 10 out of 1,000. <coughs> um, so that works. I think you're going to run into a little problem, though, when you deal with trees. Because with a tree, we're not concerned about the total number of nodes. We're concerned about the total depth. Because this is the stack. Push, push, push. So the depth here is 4. When we come up here and then create a new one, the depth is still four. Even though the total number of things here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen things in here. What we want to do is we want to limit the total depth of the stack. Shouldn't be too low. So you have to do something like um, increment the number whenever you call random list, but then decrement the number whenever you Turn from it or something like that. Couldn't you count the number of operators and that's like number of operators uh, minus you have to do some more work on that number to get the depth of the stack? Well, another thing we can do is we, we need to have a, something that's counting the depth of the stack. So basically, a number that goes up whenever we count, whenever we call random list, and a number that goes down whenever we return from it. is we can pass in to random list the current depth. So if our depth is greater than or equal to 10, we'll just return a new singleton. So random list needs now a number that tells it how deep it is. Yep. Why, I don't understand why we need to do this. Why we need to do the depth. Because um, we don't want that stack to overflow if we get expressions that are too long. Okay. Okay, so random list needs a number that tells it how deep it is. So when we call list factory random list, we have to give it an initial number of zero. Are we good? So when is that number going to go up? Uh, every time, every time we, we, call, we call. Every time we call random list, we'll put in depth plus one. Okay, yeah, but where's the variable depth? Oh, never mind. Yeah. It's right here. So when we call random list the first time, we'll pass in zero. 
when it calls random list, so we're going to call random list with zero, and it's going to spit back, chances are, a compound, right? <coughs> going to add 1 to this number and pass in a 1. And there's a pretty good chance this is going to return a compound. So this one needs to call random list again, but now it's going to put a 2 there. And if we string this along 10 times, the 10th one is going to go, oh, my depth is 10, and stop. Yep. Is that what the depth, depth plus 1 was all about? Yeah. Because, you know, the so take the current depth, which is what you were called with, Add one to it and pass that along to the next one. Okay. When we do the tree here, we're going to call it the zero, and let's say it returns a you know a plus an add. So an add needs to call give me a random expression. So what number is it going to pass in here? Five. Five. What's Seven. the depth at this level? Oh, plus. One, so it, it takes the zero and it adds one. And then this one here, let's say it's a multiply, so it needs to create two children. So it's going to call random expression with a two. <clears throat> this one here maybe is a, is a divide. So it needs to call random expression. And it's going to pass it with a three. And then this one's all done. Let, let's, let's say our maximum depth is supposed to be three. So at this point, it returns a constant. So now we need to, we need, we need to produce the other child over here. So it's going to pass in 3, because it's just the depth of the, the parent plus 1. So all the children along this level are going to get a 3. All the ones at this level are going to get a 2. And all the ones at this level are going to get a 1. So where does the subtract happen? How does it subtract one to get back to two? It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to. It only adds when it creates a child. When the child goes away, it just goes back to the number it was before. So here, depth is zero. The value of depth is one. The value of depth is two. So forth. What we're aiming to do is limit the depth of the tree. I don't care how, how wide the tree is. I just want to make sure the depth doesn't exceed a certain number. No at me, but it's not going to get any wider than that. Because it's all binary. And binary. Right. Yeah. I suppose one thing you could do is you could say, well, what's the maximum number of nodes I'm going to use there? If my, if my depth is 100, what's the absolute maximum number of stuff I could have? that might look like that. <laughs> you went really deep down here, and then you suddenly you stop. So and, the, and then there was nothing on that side. Are all the operators um, considered nodes as well? Yeah. So you'd have 2 to the 10 plus 2 to the 9 plus 2 to the 8 plus 2 to the Well, 7. how many things are in here? On that bottom row, it would be 2 to the 10, wouldn't it? Well, the, the depth is 3, right? So well, I'm talking about for your 2 to the 10 example. Yeah. Well, this would be 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. 1, yeah. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's 8 things down here. But with the total number here is... Then you do plus 2 squared for the second row. Okay. Plus 2 plus squared plus 2 to the 1st plus 2 to the 0. Yeah. This happens to be equal to... When this number is big, forget about that. That's it's close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this this series, two to the third plus two squared plus two one two to the third times two to the fourth. That's fine. So that's why I was doing this. Okay. This is 
basically a depth of nine, including all the stuff in it. All right, see if this works. Call random list. Yeah. I'm increasing the depth by one. Yeah. So I'm going to take whatever the current depth is, add one to it, and pass that along oh. to the next one. Okay. This is this is sort of like how we did size, but in reverse. When we did size, we said, well, the size of the list is one for myself plus whatever the size is of the the next guy. Here, we're telling kind of like the next guy, use this as the size, because the size is whatever my current size is, or the depth, plus one. So, so we're just flipping it in reverse. This is a common recursive programming technique to limit how, how far you go into the recursion. Okay, so I think this technique will work better for your expression. All right. Uh, what's next? <coughs> ah, we need a function class. And I think there's a good analogy to that, which is right now we have compound, singleton, and empty. And we have a list interface. Um, let me ask you a question. How do I create a empty list and then add to it? Um, can you? You no. want to convert it to a single set. I mean, I do have a method called add. I thought in the empty we didn't, we didn't do anything. Uh, we do have an add. Okay. We do have an add. Yeah. I can go list a equals new empty. Empty. Add. empty. A dot add. add. A dot add. What is that? And then semicolon. string will give us a still an empty. Zoinks. A still an empty. What did we do wrong? Um, I think we, we have Netflix. to add a compound, not or a singleton, right? Not just an integer. Why 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 isn't a a singleton? Well, because you haven't called it a single thing. You're trying to put five in an empty or in an empty node. I remember from two weeks ago this worked. Yeah, but it didn't work this time. Yeah, it didn't work this time. So what do I need to do to actually add 5 and 10 and 2 to this list? What does add return? Return a singleton. Return a singleton? So then why doesn't this work? Have to do the two string for empty? No. I'm going to sit back here and wait till you guys come up with the answer. Why doesn't that work? I can have my lunch for you. Because you're no longer adding to an empty. After you 
after you add the first one, it turns into a single thing. All right. But then why can't I go to dot two string? Your two string method. Because A is referring to an empty. It's set by default to just return nothing. All right. So how can I get it so that my list actually contains five and ten and two? List. Red box though is five, ten, and two. Which one? Yeah. Are they going to be in there? Nothing in there. You got to return a compound instead of a single thing. What do I do with that? Does this return anything? return something, and we're not storing it away anywhere. So what, sh what should I do here so that I can actually find out what's in that list? List B equals that. This thing? Yeah. Yep. So that instead of having to make a brand new variable, I can make it so that it looks like A actually now has all three things in it. like the list itself is growing. So the difference between this way of doing the list and the way we did it a month ago, the way we did it a month ago is we just said add, right? But add didn't return anything. It modified the list itself. Here, add returns something, so we have to store it back into the same variable so it looks like the list is changing. Does that make sense? So there's a little extra step for the user, which is I can't just call add on the list. I have to store it back into a, the same variable and replace the original variable with this new one, or replace the, the value with this new one to make it act like the old add list. Okay, so that, that's the problem I'm trying to set up for you here, which is the way you use this list from the user's perspective is different from the way we used it before. Before, we just had we said make a list and just add stuff to it. And we didn't have to worry about reassigning the variable over and over again. So what I want to do is add a new class called linked list that behaves just like the old one did. Where I can just call add on it, and 
it will add to the list. And I'll have to remember to reassign the variable. Are we good? Yes. Well, you want to see it done? Yes. yes. <laughs> Just show us the goddamn answer. <laughs> Our brains are starting to hurt. Good? This one's actually 100% good. Yeah. Okay. Tells you whether or not the list contains a value you're looking for. Oh, okay. You turn A dot remove. Almost. Just A dot remove. A dot remove. Because we don't return anything. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, that is the. Uh, but where 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 is contains in the. Singleton returns uh, is it? Is it? returns true if the value we're looking for, the target is equal to itself. Okay. And then compound, it either returns if it's equal to itself or if the next thing down the line contains it. All right. All right. So what do we do here? Size should return zero. Zero. 
next slot. Two strings should return. Empty. Empty string. Now x dot add five. Size is one. What's the value? Uh, what type of thing is X? Is it a an empty, a compound, or a singleton? It's a singleton. Uh, it's still a linked list. So the cool thing here is now the user doesn't know anything about empties and singletons and compounds. They only see they only see linked list, and the linked list works just like the linked list they're used to. They just call add on it, and it adds stuff to it. They don't have to remember to assign it to another variable. So we created this wrapper class called linked list that embodies the whole idea of a list and hides it from the user. Should we go x dot Remove. Did remove work? No. I think uh, did it remove work? Turn this and turn next. Oh, I know why. What do we got to do here? So we've created this wrapper class that hides all the details of how the 